This conference will now be recorded. Fine, yes. Yesterday we were, um, I was uh, going through the entire uh, session topics and I was providing you the overview on what we are going to learn. Um, I also provided a quick introduction about um, what what a typical performance tester does in his work and what is required and how are we how are, how are tailored this course to meet these objectives right and um, as i was saying um, the entire uh, uh, course is tailored in such a way that uh, whatever is required for you to transition from pg to pg will be uh, taken care uh, from the session point of view okay and and uh, most of the sessions are going to be uh, practically based we are going to do it um, hands on um, by uh, taking a sample application sample code there will be a problem with in that code and we'll be testing it finding out the problem and then we'll be um, uh, fixing that in the code and then we'll be rerunning those uh, again to see whether the issue is fixed or not that is how we will typically go through most of these uh, um, engineering activity okay uh, today what we'll do is um, out of this topic right uh, uh, I'll not, I'll not get started with the day one today. Day one will be tomorrow. But what I'll do is I'll just randomly take one of the topic just for the, um, the people to understand the um, uh, the way uh, the topics will be taken or to just uh, get the feeling of the uh, teaching style. I'll just pick a random topic and uh, probably next uh, 20, 30 minutes, I'll go over that so that uh, they'll get a feel of it. And, and from tomorrow, we will get started with the day one. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll just take the concepts about the um, say Java threads or, 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 or the way the threads are created, the way the threads are destroyed, the way we do the threat configuration um, in the server.xml. Okay, so I'll just go and get started with this uh, Java threads today. Uh, anyway, from a flow perspective, when we start from day one, uh, again, it will be covered. But um, yeah, I'll just take a random topic today and then we'll, we'll um, go into it. Yeah, just give me, give me, give me a second. Um, so I was telling you yesterday as well, right? Um, when you take any system, um, when you take any system and then look into it from a resourcing perspective, from the resource uh, utilization perspective, um, you will be bounded by certain things, right? You will have some boundary for your CPU. You might have a four core, you might have a eight core, fifteen core, whatever it is. Uh, but you will have a limitation from a resourcing perspective on a from a CPU. Second is from the um, your memory or heap. Right? It can be a four gig RAM, eight gig uh, RAM, or sixteen gig RAM, and uh, you will assign certain heap uh, to your application. So that is also at some point of time you will be constrained. So you will be constrained with the uh, CPU. You will be constrained with the uh, memory. Similarly, you will also uh, be constrained with the threads. Right? Um, the number of um, thread that can handle your task right so whatever task you're going to get uh, executed um, it will be handled through a uh, you can just think that as a task handler right every thread is going to pick an uh, operation uh, you might be if it is a web application um, whatever you you know, concurrently we are going to do it right you one, one might be doing a login one might do your search so whatever is task coming in it is going to be handled by the thread and uh, the number of threads is also going to be a, a bottleneck or a constraint. It, it is going to have an upper limit. It can be 200, 250, 300, uh, depending upon the uh, need. And also, um, your thread is directly proportional to the CPU also. Because more thread, more CPU is going to consume. Every thread is going to need a CPU to run, it, run, run the operation, right? Even though it is going to handle the task, it is going to handle the login, it is going to handle the search, 
but when the uh, code is going to get executed it is going to um, consume cpu okay so thread and cpu are always interrelated we will when we go into jvm benchmarking and all we will get into this in detail okay um, how to benchmark your jvm how to give the maximum thread how to give the maximum um, <clears throat> eap right so all these things uh, from a benchmarking perspective we will learn later but when when we talk about certain uh, constraint uh, cpu is going to be one constraint memory is going to be one constraint thread is going to be another constraint and obviously you will also have other factors like your network utilization um, your disk utilization there are certain other factors also involved uh, i would say uh, that is all um, something external or maybe a um, other factors but the core factors are your cpu memory and thread okay and um, to explain the thread a little more simpler way right um, the way it works in any server um i'll always compare that with the um uh, swiggy kind of a um, analogy because uh, not uh, apple to apple comparison but just for our um, convenience or just for our easy understanding so that we will not forget the uh, concepts um, uh, in the future okay so um, don't do don't do a apple to apple comparison but for us to understand this concept i'm just comparing with the way swiggy operates or any uh, any of your food app uh, delivery app um, works <clears throat> okay so we we, we know that um, uh, this swiggy um, Uh, the way swiggy app works right you um, order something in the mobile uh, using the swiggy app and what happens there are going to be um, the 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 order goes to the respective restaurant okay um, there are multiple swiggy uh, people who are going to get deployed right the number of swiggy people that is going to get deployed depends upon um, the area or the the time as well say for example uh, the morning or afternoon you might have less people maybe in the evening time after 6:30 or 7 where you expect more orders there will be more people uh, deployed in the same area right so for varying traffic conditions for varying demand conditions there will be um, some number of uh, people that are that will be available in the morning and afternoon and more people will be available in the evening and they will be waiting for the orders right uh, some of these people will be just waiting um, to take the orders some will be busy going and taking the um, uh, food that is available ready and to deliver it to the uh, your uh, uh, home and at the peak time if there are too many orders everybody might be busy everybody might be delivering uh, taking the um, uh, uh, food and then uh, delivering it to the home so they might be totally busy also right so the swiggy people might be too busy or they might be uh, some might be wait, waiting some might be um, uh, delivering so it it is going to be a mixture of various um, mode or mixture of various status right um so um this is how the swiggy operates when you look into the threads right it is quite similar the threads are nothing but the task handler i told right task handler they are the one who is going to handle the request and then provide the response similar to the way swiggy operates threads also um number of threads um that you need to handle the task can vary okay so you know that uh, maybe in the morning time um you it, it you will have more traffic maybe in the afternoon or late in the night now you will not have a lot of traffic so uh, um the in server or in server will also deploy a similar model where we will say that i just need 100 threads as a minimum and 250 threads as maximum okay so uh, little different from the base wiki operates because there in the morning afternoon you just employ 10 people in the evening you employ 20 people but here uh, you have more flexibility depending upon the traffic depending upon the 
uh, incoming request automatically the server will handle this min and max you just need to provide okay any point of time give me 100 threads okay don't reduce less than 100 even if they are going to be idle that's okay but i need 100 but you go up to maximum of 250 because i know I, I i might get more traffic more request um th throughout the day any point of time so from 100 to 250 you give me the threats okay so depending upon the request from 100 when the jvm starts it will provide you 100 threats and it will stay 100 if the requests are less and the traffic is less <coughs> at some point of time the threats are going to get um, uh, um, busy right uh, 80 percentage 90 percentage are going to be busy automatically your server will spin up additional threats 110 120 130 and it will keep on increasing it if there are if the busy still if the still the threats are busy more traffic are coming in up to 250 it can't go beyond 250 okay beyond 250 if the threats are busy then it's a problem uh, uh, the, uh, it's one of the threat contention okay and 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 when the traffic is coming down when the threats are idle then server will automatically it will kill those additional threats up to 100 okay so it can vary between 100 and 250 um, depending upon the number of requests number of the traffic and also the thread utilization okay so in in that way it it is something similar to the way swiggy operates just for our comparison so that when you uh, re recollect your thread concept the way it is going to get created or destroyed uh, you will not forget this that is the only reason i wanted to bring that um, comparison. okay um what we'll do is um so there are various states of thread i said right um even with swiggy I, I said they will be waiting they'll be busy uh somebody will be uh, some 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 will be uh um handling the uh work somebody will be just uh, uh parked in the um somewhere in the road uh for waiting for the request so the threads thread also in any server the thread also can move between different states okay uh, they might be just uh, created where they'll be called a new and then once they created they they will be ready for taking the work okay so it is called runnable runnable means it is ready to run uh, there is no request came in it is uh, just uh, um, in a runnable state it is uh, waiting to pick the um, uh, 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 any task or work running is where ex where where actually the work is uh, been assigned it is executing the code um, so new and runnable uh, new is something when, when you won't even able to track that because when it is just created it is called new more, uh, immediately it will move into a state called runnable or it can also be called as parking right um, runnable or parking is nothing but they are in a parked state they are ready to pick the work okay they are they are they are uh, available uh, ready to pick the work running is they are actually executing it uh, it is the task has been assigned it is executing the code but in between running and runnable it can also go into a waiting state okay this waiting state can be of a different reason okay uh, waiting can be because you have an explicit wait in the code uh, you uh, in the in the testing uh, uh, load runner terminology we call as a think time right in the, in the load runner script also we forcefully wait the script to wait we forcefully uh, ask the script to wait similarly in the java code also you can forcefully ask the java code to wait uh, by keeping some sleep time red dot sleep Okay, so that could be one reason. Second could be because of some block. Some thread can be uh, blocked by other threads. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll get into those uh, thread blocks, synchronization, um, how to uh, identify the thread blocks and all a little later. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, the threads can be in a waiting state because of the blocking state also. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just, just go uh, start our Tomcat. Okay, before starting the Tomcat, let me go and show you the configuration. So I go to the Tomcat. Okay, in the Tomcat is where I have my war file I showed you yesterday, right? 
this war file is what will will give to you um then there are various war file uh, for every uh, response time memory issue thread issue we will have a, a war file for each of these category which i'll give it to you which you can deploy it okay so this war file is there and then i'll go and uh, go to the configuration file in the configuration file i'll go to the server.xml here is where i'll go and configure the <clears throat> threads um i'll just open with the notepad plus plus okay now i can go and give what is my minimum thread required maximum thread is that is required okay for now i just given 3 as my minimum thread so when jvm starts it will give me minimum as 3 okay and depending upon the traffic it can go up to 6 this is my configuration okay i'm just going to run a very small load test so i don't want to keep 100 200 300 threads i'm just going to keep it very minimal for our uh, understanding and learning okay and then i'll go and save it then i'll go and start my server Okay, it will take a couple of seconds to start. Uh, uh, let me take some water. I'll just uh, keep it in the mute for a few seconds. Okay, the server is started. So whenever you start the server, at the end you will get this confirmation, <clears throat> okay, um, saying that the startup took these many seconds. And um, one more thing is, uh, I'll, I'll I'll probably send you the another video where I would have talked about um, the basic things, okay, uh, to um, how to start the Tomcat, how to start the uh, deploy the war file. I'll also anyway cover that as part of the uh, session tomorrow and day after. But whoever has registered already. Uh, they can start installing the tomcat i'll i'll probably <clears throat> i will provide you the access to the google drive today over as registered so that they can download the tomcat they can download the war file they can start setting up their laptop okay today you can start doing that setup i'll um, I, we we don't need to wait for the sessions to happen tomorrow or day after you can start looking to the video and then um, you can start installing the tomcat java eclipse and deploy this war file okay <clears throat> so you start up the war file and also i'm going to go to the a tool called j visual vm okay this also it will be available in the drive for you to install the, to download and install i'll go and open this uh, visual vm you can double click it you can double click that visual vm okay just download it from the drive uh, if you go to the drive for example um, let me show if you go to the drive and then if you go to monitoring uh, either it will be there in the monitoring.zip or um, you will find the visual vm Uh, one minute. Okay, it is not that. What I'll do is I'll copy this. <clears throat> I'll zip it and copy this entire folder. I'll copy this so that you can download it. I thought it is already there. You can also go and <clears throat> go and download it from the internet. Also, we go and search for um, Visual VM. Um, you can also download it anyway. But, uh, 
let me go and <coughs> yeah. <coughs> okay, fine. So anyway, it is now uploaded. You can download it from here, and then you can double click that uh, double click it from the bin folder, or you can. Sometimes what happens is when you open it, right, you will get get a problem saying um, your Java version is uh, not supported. Um, so when you have two or three different Java version in your machine, you can explicitly explicitly go and say, I open the Visual VM dot exe from this folder and provide the, your Java path. Okay, so uh, by default, I'll uh, again I'll show you how to set the Java path and all from, from tomorrow. But uh, I'm, I'm just noted noted. Um, when you open the JVisual VM, and if it is saying says that a Java version is not supported, then say for example, if I hit this right, it will say that um, you are running a Visual VM using an unsupported Java version. Okay, so by default, I think my Java version is pointing to Java 17, which is not supported. So it says that use JDK 8 to JDK 14. So I also have JDK um, 14 in my machine or JDK 8 in my machine. So what I am saying is. Um, I'm saying open the J Visual VM and use the Java available in this path. Okay, so uh, sometimes these things you need to uh, figure it out, right? Uh, when you get an error, when you go on uh, any tools, uh, when you install it, open it, right? You might get some problem, even with the Tomcat, with Java, Eclipse. But when you get an error, just try to go and explore the issue so that you learn a lot, okay? Don't hesitate or don't um, afraid about errors. Uh, errors are good. You take the errors, go and search it on the internet. You'll get three, four, five options. Try it out, and you learn a lot uh, in that journey. Okay, so I'm going to type it. <coughs> it will open the Visual VM. Okay, once you open the Visual VM, it will list down if there is any uh, Java process that is running. It will list on all these things. For example, um, JMeter is currently open. JMeter is a Java process. It, it, it's a JMeter by itself is a Java uh, application. It says that there is a Java uh, Apache JMeter.jar. There is a Tomcat which is running, which we where we have started our application. Uh, right. So what we are going to do is we are going to <coughs> monitor a few things from a Tomcat perspective. So I'll go and select this Tomcat. Okay. Then I'll go to the threads. Okay. And in the threads, come down, look for the executed threads. Okay. Um, if you see here, our 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 uh, application is running in 8083, executor 1, 2, 3. Three threads are started when the JVM started. Okay. So we have in the server.xml, we gave three as the minimum. Okay, and it is running in 8083 port. So if you see here, executor one, two, three, only three threads are started. And if you see the color code, see again, whatever I'm saying, it is only for our learning. It is not for monitoring the thread in this view, in this window. We will not monitor like this. Okay, I'll, I'll, when we go to monitoring, I'll tell how to monitor the thread uh, utilization and all. But for our learning, I'm using this view. I'm using Visual VM. I'm using the, uh, the uh, tab called thread. Here, I come here. I look into this one, two, three. Uh, all the, the three three threads are started, and if you see, it, all three are in orange color. When you see orange color, if you come down, it says that it's a parking mode. Right, uh, right hand side, um, uh, right, right bottom, you have a color coding. The the orange is parking mode, which is nothing but it is in a runnable state. Okay, uh, where is it? Yeah. It is in a running, uh, runnable state. Runnable state or parking are both the same way. The threads are created. Uh, the work is not assigned. It is ready to take the work. Or you can say that it is an idle. It, it can, it, you can mention it as idle or parking or runnable. Okay. Now, what I will do is I'll just go and start a small test. Okay. From my JMeter, I'm going to hit that uh, uh, e-library site. So this one, local. Okay. 
this this is what I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a login uh, through the core script. Let me check whether my um, DB is also running. Yeah, it is running. Let me restart the Tomcat one more time. I don't know why it is taking more time. Let me do one thing. I'll just go and restart this. Okay. And uh, I'll go to this. Then. Dev. Going to start this. <clears throat> I was playing around with the war file. I don't know whether I have uh, um, modified something. Uh, let me check out again. If not, I'll just go and download another war file from our drive and I'll install it. It is on. So I'll just go and do. <clears throat> this step it should come fast i i could see some entry in the log actually response code yeah it has come okay now i'll again go and <clears throat> We close it and come back. We'll open the J Visual Group again. One more time. Okay, so I'll go inside the Tomcat. I'll go to the threads. Yeah, one, two, one, three. Okay, what I'll do is now I'll go and run a small test <coughs> using JMeter. I'll give the users user count as just one user or probably two user. Okay, two user uh, uh, They will be accessing the home page and do a login <clears throat> Okay, so I'm just a two user. I'm just going to run it. Okay <clears throat> Now if you see here uh, one two three now it is an orange state now if you see to uh, now two one three now in, it is in green state, right? Uh, green is not even running, and then it went to sleeping. Um, when both both are now in sleeping, and then again uh, to uh, running. So if you see this states um, thread state, right? Uh, execute two and three are where we see, where in green, and then sleeping, and then again it went to parking. Now if you see 
uh, thread two is in parking mode. Thread one has picked the third task. Since there are two concurrent users, only two threads are being used um, effectively, right? At any point of time, one thread is idle anyway, because we just have two user, we have given it in the uh, J meter. Okay, now um, I think uh, all the three threads are going to the sleep mode, sorry, uh, to the parking mode. Maybe I have just given it to run for a few iteration. <clears throat> yeah, I just gave it to run for uh, five iterations. Okay, so uh, with just two users, you saw that two threads were moving between uh, running, sleeping, and parking. Right? That is where the three states you uh, saw. Now what I will do is I'll just go and increase this to say um, uh, eight eight users. Okay, just save it, <clears throat> or maybe uh, five users and save it, and then run it. Now if you see, as the users ramp up, right, you will see additional threads getting created. Uh, now thread is three three is busy two is busy one is busy all three are taking up the task <clears throat> now if you you'll see slowly uh, your additional threads might get created i'll just sort it yeah if you see here thread four thread five additional two threads are uh, created and all five threads are moving between green orange and gray which means uh, partially it is idle, partially it is sleeping, and partially it is uh, doing uh, some activity. Right? So all the five threads are now, uh, additional two threads are created, and all the five threads are ending the task. And, and, and since we have given only five iteration, after a few seconds, everything will now go into a, a parking mode because your test might have stopped. Your test is stopped, right? Zero out of five is running. Now, after a few seconds, okay, the um, the server will automatically understand that okay there is no traffic coming in and all the five threads are idle why to have additional threads because uh, every thread you are going to keep it active it is going to consume cpu okay the server after a few seconds it will go and terminate those two threads a any of those two threads it will go and terminate it you just, you just have to wait and watch maybe after a few seconds you will find that two threads will get destroyed but uh, yeah, one is gone. We have four more. Uh, one more has to go off. Maybe after a few seconds, <clears throat> even that one will get destroyed. Yeah, even that one is now gone. So you have just we have one, three, and five, three threads. Okay, that's how the thread life cycle is going to work. Yeah, initially, whatever minimum you, you give it, it will get created. And uh, when when traffic is going to come in, the thread state is going to go between um, running, sleeping, waiting. Sorry, uh, running, sleeping, and parking. I'll, uh, the other threads, other uh, states are. You see, there's something called monitor, right? Monitor is monitor is nothing but a blocked state. You can also see if the threads are getting blocked, that will be in a different different color. And those blocked state. And all we will be looking into it later. How, what is blocked state? How to identify? How to find the root cause? How to take the thread dumps? We'll, we'll be looking into it in detail later. Okay, what we are seeing today is um, how to do a configuration of the threads. Um, how threads, uh, threads will get created, and then what are the different states of thread? And then when there's more traffic, how additional threads are created? When the traffic comes down, how, tra how these uh, threads are destroyed? Okay, the server will only maintain the minimum threads. So I'll take a pass here, guys. Yeah, if you have um, any questions uh, on this topic, uh, feel free to ask or put it in the chat. <clears throat> Anybody has any questions on this topic or probably in general about the various topics that we have planned? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I have a few questions. Sudhakar, yeah. Yes, Sudhakar, go ahead. Um, so uh, the relation between number of threads and number of threads, how it is being calculated uh, when from uh, when you hear you, yeah, we cannot, yeah, we cannot calculate that relationship because it, it depends upon various factors. Um, and it coming to your server, um, say a login request is coming. Uh, um, it might take 
500 milliseconds to uh, get over if your met- if your um, uh, code is running very fast and if it is going to be very simple operation that particular um, request will get over in 500 milliseconds or it can be 200 milliseconds or it can be one second it can be two seconds or it can be three seconds okay, depending upon the execution time so depending upon the execution time one thread say assuming that uh, uh, it is it is one second okay a task is going to take one second for execution okay so which means um, every thread uh, uh, or or each thread can handle one request per second okay um if there are 100 such requests coming in concurrently under login coming in concurrently then definitely you would need 100 threads to handle it to maintain a response time of one second okay so uh, you mean uh, so it is a directly proportional i mean the thread is equals to one one thread is equals to one request right in when the execution time is one second for example i take two back to one second but it may not be right it may be less than that or it can be more than that if it is less than that say if it is 250 milliseconds then a, a, a thread can handle four requests per second approximately so it depends upon the entirely it depends upon the your execution time that is why I, we told it is also proportional to your cpu also right so when when cpu enough cpu is there there are two constraint one is the actual execution time so if your code is very simple it is not a complex logic it is going to get completed within 250 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds even for that 250 milliseconds you need a cpu if cpu is very busy even that cpu time will not get it you have to wait that's that's going to be waiting so if cpu is very busy if there are if, if there are uh, um, if your system is already um, running too many applications uh, parallelly if the cpu is uh, very very uh, availability is very less then it's not only execution time it is also it will also include waiting time to get a cpu okay so assuming that your cpu is good then your thread will uh, not wait for a, c- a cpu to get allocated so um, in that case if the execution time is very less the code is going to be very simple it is just going to take 250 milliseconds then a thread can handle four uh, per second four requests per second so it uh, so which means you cannot actually anticipate or calculate we can we can you can we can anticipate actually but we cannot uh, you can exactly you cannot go and say you can anticipate that okay um uh, the the code time is uh, the request time is going to be just uh, you might be running some one user test and then trying to understand what is the response time accordingly you will go and configure the, the threads so you can anticipate but you cannot exactly measure yeah but 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 from the LR perspective, I mean, from a performance testing perspective, we can uh, calculate number of reads, and based on that, we can uh, put the number of users, right? So based on that, uh, it will define the threads automatically. No, yeah. See, thread you need to define it. Okay, uh, you run a single user test, look at the response time of um, uh, your all the transactions. Okay, um, mm-hmm. uh, see number of users that you are going to configure in your load runner or J meter. That is a different calculation. Okay, that depends upon your non-functional requirements. How many concurrent users uh, the, the business is looking for? How many transactions per hour you are looking for? That is a requirement that you will configure it in your tool. But for your app server to handle that traffic, there for that you need to go and say, I need a 4 GB heap, 8 GB heap. I need 200 threads, 250 threads. That is a JVM benchmarking exercise which you have to do it. Okay, for doing that you might need to run a one user test, 10 user, 100 user. 500 user you will slowly do that scalability test to understand how your jvm response that is a whole jvm benchmarking exercise which we will look into it in detail but as you mentioned yes that's correct um to to for us to arrive at the this min and max you should you should anticipate um, um uh, what is your uh, single login uh, response time or other transaction like your search your checkout how much it uh, it is taking accordingly you can go and probably uh initially you can go and configure some numbers but you will be able to arrive at the proper number only by doing a iterative test uh, by including all your transactions running for 100 users 200 users 500 users that scalability test will be required uh, for your benchmarking okay okay so that's good one more question uh, 
So, yeah, yeah, please. Uh, any standard uh, thumb rule for Fred and CPU ratio? Any? Oh, uh, sorry, what ratio? Uh, thread and CPU. Um, thread and CPU. <coughs> Any standard um, rule or thumb rule? See, uh, I don't I think again uh, the standard uh, thumb rule can be applied for sure uh, just because it will again boil down to multiple things. Okay, one, how many applications you are going to run it in that machine? And whether it is a dedicated, say, assuming that it is a very dedicated uh, server, no other things are going to run. Only your application is going to run. Okay, and if you take a eight gigs, uh, eight 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 core CPU or a four core CPU, okay, and um, number of threads you can give it, it not only depends upon the CPU, okay, it will also be constrained with your available heap and the network utilization. Uh, and the traffic pattern okay too many things will come into picture you cannot just go and say if it is a four core i can go and give 250 threads end of the day it all depends upon what each thread is going to do it for each thread if you if your um, application code if your login if your search if you check out is cpu intensive code if it is going to have too many um uh uh, algorithms which are complex, which are CPU intensive, then every each of your thread is going to consume more CPU, which means you you cannot go and say, okay, four core CPU, I'll go and allocate two fifty threads. Maybe you can get started, but that is one constraint. So it, it all depends upon the execution time, how CPU intensive your code is, and also if your code is going to consume too many uh, memory or a heap again you cannot go and just uh, since you have a, a 16 core say if you have a very big uh, mission 16 core mission i cannot go and uh, put 200 threads or 2000 threads because if your application is going to consume more memory you might have only 16 gig gram or you, you would have given 12 gig of heap you cannot just go and say i i will spin up a uh, thousand threads until thousand concurrent users no you will be constrained with your heap consumption or with your network utilization so it is not only one single factor i, I can go i just go and say that okay it's a 16 gig just go and give 700 threads that is not going to work out depends upon application to application it is going to change that is where you need to do this jvm benchmarking uh, you, you cannot just go and add the, the more cpus to increase the capacity no it is all bounded by different different factors your cpu threads uh, heap uh, your disk utilization your network utilization uh, so many factors are in at least three factors that are involved are your um, uh, cpu your thread utilization your heap utilization and then the uh, network utilization so all these things you need to look into it when we do the jb benchmarking to arrive at the optimal numbers okay so basically it's all depends on benchmarking so how do you define and how do you take uh, yeah, you need to do that JVM benchmarking. Uh, you as a performance engineer work with the architects. Uh, once you do the initial load testing and all, all the engineering work are completed. Where you have, you have profiled, you have fine tuned your application for memory leaks for response time issue, and then you need to conduct a JVM benchmarking for a new application or for the existing application. Every uh, six months at least, we need to do do a JVM benchmarking because you might have modified a lot of code. Your footprint of your code would have changed. So every six months, you have to do a, go and do a JVM benchmarking. Okay. Thanks, uh, Satish. Yeah, sure. Yeah, anyone else have any other questions related to this today's topic or in general? Um, yeah, feel free to put it in the chat or uh, uh, voice it over. Mm, hi, uh, hi, hi. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one first is that uh, we define core pool size and uh, some thread pool size in the Kubernetes, right? In the YAML files. So, okay. is it somehow, you know, when we increase that, uh, we get be better performance, we can achieve more throughput, right? We have observed that. So, like, 
what could be the reason and what is the significance of uh, that is it related to some you know increase in threads or if we increase too much what would be the consequences whether it will consume a lot of resources or... correct see that is where i uh, again i'm i'm, I'm repeating the same thing right? um increasing the thread uh, thread is a t- task handler right um mm. so if you have only 50 threads probably it can it can uh, the response times are uh, good you can handle 60 concurrent request or 60 concurrent uh, users when you go mm. go and test it for 100 users 150 users um all the 50 threads will be busy so other other uh, uh, users have to wait so if you're going to go increase your uh, uh, thread you will get a positive result uh, better throughput better response time but mm. it it not it, it is not directly proportional okay you just increase a thread you get a performance maybe at, at to a certain level but it all depends upon how many what are the cpu availability okay, every thread you are going to increase you have to consume cpu for already yeah. your cpu is a 90 percentage then if you are going to increase a thread then you will not get a positive um, output your throughput will uh, still be reduced you will still the response time will have a, will be bad it is not uh, directly you can go and say i increase it in some cases it might be because uh, you already the config threads are very less a CPU or uh, you have a enough CPU, you know, you have enough memory. At that time, you would have noticed that okay, your throughput increased, your response time increased. But it's not going to be always the case. When before you go and increase a thread, you go and look into the um, CPU uh, availability. Whether the current CPU is 50 percentage or 40 percentage, what is the current uh, heap utilization? That is 30 percentage or 40 percentage. Then you go and increase it. Okay, that is uh, one of the factor you need to look into it. Okay. Um, second, as you mentioned, yes, um, um, uh, the resource utilization, um, uh, the more thread you're going to increase, it will again, it will increase your CPU, it will increase your memory, but how far it can go up to, it depends upon your baseline. Current current state, if CPU is 60%, it will go to 65 maybe. The heap utilization is uh, 50, it can go to 60. But if it's already at 80 or 90, then you will have a negative impact. So again, in the JVM benchmarking, we will do this iterative test. Okay, you you fix up some number for thread, you will fix up some number for heap, then uh, run a test for 200 users, 500 users, see what is the response time, see what is your CPU utilization, memory utilization, thread utilization, and then increase your um, concurrent user. If the uh, thread utilization is very high, then go and increase the thread. If you have enough CPU headroom, uh, heap headroom. So all these things is what you need to uh, consider from a JVM benchmarking. We will look into it in detail uh, during the session anyway. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, to answer your question, uh, it will have a positive impact to a certain level. But after that, uh, it, it throughput will not increase. Just because increasing thread pool will not increase the throughput if you have other constraints uh, with the CPU or heap. Okay. And uh, um, like, why do we define that uh, number actually? Because if more threads are getting created, it will, uh, the it's not that we are limiting the threads to that number, right? Let's say I have defined it as 10 and 20 threads are getting created. Anyways, it is going to, uh, the, the threads are going to be 20, right? Or it is, no. we are limiting no, no. that by defining that. Number. Yeah, yeah. Because every thread you're going to get created it is going to consume CPU by default. Okay, though it's not going to work, it will still consume a CPU. <clears throat> okay, so it is it will be counterproductive. You cannot. Or your question is, why should I maintain min or max? I'll just give um, um, 200 or 150. Uh, mm-hmm. No min. I just give max and let it be idle. Is what you're saying, correct? And if I don't give, yeah, second one is if I don't give min also, like anything if I don't provide it, or if I provide very uh, only minimum as one or two, that is mm-hmm. also an, one. Um, see, uh, giving a very low value is also not going to be good because uh, what will happen is uh, 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 definitely your JVing is, is going to spin up additional threads, and mm. uh, if your traffic pattern, right. If the traffic pattern is uh, uh, depending on traffic pattern, you are, you are, uh, again, your thread will get uh, deleted and it will go back to two. And again, if the tra- traffic is going to start coming in, depending upon the traffic pattern, uh, these things are also have to be considered. But giving a very low value is not at all. See, uh, uh, giving a maximum value is to handle the peak cover. To handle the peak mm-hmm. cover, to handle the unexpected traffic, we are going a max. 
but minimum mm. you will definitely know through the day uh, you are going to get a uh, uh, 100 or 200 uh, uh, concurrent request right so you know that okay mm. definitely you need 50 threads for sure so we will mm. not keep a very low value for sure that is not ideal value ideal way to do it so minimum you will uh, you can add some cushion and then give a, uh, a value that will always be uh, utilized your thread utilization has to be 70 percentage optimal okay you we have to maintain that of uh, which means out of this uh, uh, if you are giving 100 as a minimum okay mm. any point of time 70 thread is busy that is your um, criteria so that value you give as a minimum uh, 30 percentage mm. we are giving as a, a cushion and then mm. also you can go and give a maximum as 150 so unprecedented traffic coming in you you didn't anticipate it for that time you can go up to 150 so your thread utilization uh, optimal thread utilization is 70 percentage which means if you are going to give minimum as 100 any point of time your 70 thread should be busy it cannot be like 20 percentage 10 percentage right then uh, uh, even 100 is not if you, if you see that your thread utilization is only 20 percentage in production then you can lower the min value to say 50 or 45 so that is how you have to maintain so the thumb rule is 70 percentage uh, thread mm-hmm. utilization 30 percentage headroom you can have it okay yeah uh, the maximum we cannot just keep giving maximum as 200 250 because uh, um, see it is going to spin up only the, uh, yeah. the max you can actually max you can give it because it is going to spin up only when it is required so mm-hmm. giving a high value in max will not really amper because never really it is going to get created only yeah. if actually the requirement is going to come it is going to spin up the uh, additional thread and that too that will get destroyed if the traffic is less so giving a high maximum value uh, will not have any negative impact uh, but uh, mm-hmm. giving a high minimum value will have an impact yeah but uh, giving a very low minimum value will have an impact again it will have an impact but more See, threads are going to get created anyways right even if we give less minimum value see but it will toggle between right if the the traffic is less let's say at some mm-hmm. point of time there's no traffic at all okay it will mm-hmm. unnecessarily it will pull it to a uh, very low value again the thread, mm-hmm. thread has to be created See, creating a thread it is again a, okay. it it is going to take milliseconds right so why unnecessarily mm-hmm. uh, and also it will wait for the precision to go up at uh, that time response time might get impacted So if you for sure mm-hmm. if you know that your your utilization is 70 percentage, then you give that value. Why to necessarily give a very low value? So that's why I'm mm-hmm. saying the minimum value should be 70 percentage of utilization value. Hmm. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just one more question. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, we have like threads. Um, cause cpu utilization and also cause cpu saturation right so let's say my um, because this is something i have observed uh, while working that the cpu utilization was well below 50% but the saturation was going high uh, uh, above 200% right so what i read is the threads cause this and when threads are in waiting state it causes the saturation to increase but like what could be the root cause and if you could uh, you know light us on some th- that thing um okay so see uh, um yeah one one reason is uh, definitely the the uh, root cause is the blocked state right when threads are mm. you have you have enough cpu and there is no mm. problem with the cpu there is no contention with the cpu but your yeah. threads are not actually um, um, going to utilize the cpu but it is going to get halted right, completely um, mm. the threads getting blocked again so the 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 saturation the root cause can be thread con- thread blocking okay but mm. the reason for thread blocking can be many reason okay um, mm. it could be a thread block it could be a synchronization problem um, yeah that is how it goes um, uh, we we need to look into to, to uh, get into the root cause you need to analyze you need to take the thread dumps you need to see mm-hmm. how many threads are in blocked state and why mm-hmm. they are in a blocked state um mm-hmm. if, the, if they are in blocked state for momentarily for um, say 10 milliseconds 15 milliseconds 200 milliseconds then it's okay but if it is going to mm-hmm. is blocked for more than say 500 milliseconds one second one second that is where it is going to compound that problem um 
so yeah the, the, the load average or a cpu saturation it will increase mm. uh, when the threads are actually um um high or thread utilization is very very high um mm. and uh, why high it it is because uh, all the threads are in the block is it so actually cp is not going to do uh, used because thread is not actually doing any work but it is still uh, busy because of this uh, block test data so that is how it it works yeah so that is also something we are going to cover in this uh, course like how what because we have enough cpu uh, for threads to work but still uh, let's say saturation is increasing it could be due to io iops or some other reason so that is also something we are going to you know analysis part we are going to cover yeah from analysis part we will cover the uh, see uh, the the threads are the cpu saturated the thread is uh, um, busy because of the thread contention we will go and analyze the threads uh, we will uh, will take the thread term look into the root cause of which code is creating a problem what is synchronization problem we'll go to the code and see uh, what is done wrong and we'll we'll fix it okay but certain questions like this we will discuss um, it is not more from a topic perspective but more from discussion perspective we can do it but uh, um, the root cause of uh, thread blocking synchronization yes that is covered in the uh, course okay okay yeah thank you thank you sir yeah Um, Satish Sudhakar again. Um, this yeah. one last question. Yeah, just wanted to know the difference between thread and uh, uh, the process. So how the process would work? So anyways, you uh, just told us about thread. So how the process works? Okay. So okay, I'll, I'll probably take this question uh, tomorrow first thing. Okay. Uh, I, I unfortunately I will stop at uh, in two minutes. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll take this question definitely tomorrow morning. Uh, uh thread and process uh, right uh, i think we would have seen this in uh, load runner also uh, where you wanted to run the script as thread or process even from yeah. Uh, yeah that is one and also see if you look into all the uh, software that is running in your machine right everything has a process id but my the tomcat itself is a, uh, a process whatever that is i'm running in my system right this application itself is running in a process you get a process identifier Uh, I'll, I'll probably go into that uh, probably the, the tomorrow morning um, racial question. I'll, I'll explain that and then we'll go into the session. Okay, thank you so much. The yeah, others, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, sorry, in the WhatsApp group. Or uh, if you have any questions on the course content, or if you have any questions on the registration, right? Um, yeah, please um, reach out to Kumar sir. And anything related to the course content, uh, just WhatsApp me. We will we can connect in the day time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. I'll stop the recording. We'll we'll connect again tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, bye.